you guys again. Um, let's get started. So it's a, just a brief presentation about like what's going on right now <clears throat> on the QA market. Um, mostly in Los Angeles, but not really. I mean, we, I co I'm going to cover some like US as well. Um, so today um, I'm going to introduce myself first, then talk about uh, tech trends, geography, demand, education, requirements, and then we will uh, shift slowly to QA. And then the same thing, demand and education, uh, compensation, comparison, dev versus QA. <laughs> um, then open positions overview uh, on LinkedIn and Glassdoor, uh, requirements and salary uh, levels, a little bit about career path, and uh, of course, questions and answers. Um, so. My name is Dennis. I'm currently working for um, Cornerstone on Demand. I'm a principal software developer in test over there. Um, before, uh, and uh, well, as well, I'm a test pro, uh, boot camper. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, basically. And um, um, I'm working for United States Census Bureau, really. Uh, this is the client, and previously I worked for some other uh, well-known companies like Toyota, Walt Disney, Hearst Corporation, which is a uh, cosmopolitan magazine, for example. I'm a certified, skilled, uh, agile pr uh, practitioner. So let's talk about, uh, about trends. So according uh, to Bureau of Labor Statistics, software developers actually in a very good state here, they predict growing all the way to 2026, which is like mm -hmm. where, way far from, from today. So I think we kind of safe from that perspective, um, especially um, with all these new technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, self-driving cars, SpaceX, like building LA, right? All that stuff. So, of course, median wage is around $47 an hour. And actually, wait, it's a median, it's not the top. And they predict the, the growth as well. So I think it's very good to be in, in tech industry, <laughs> very secure. So geography, as you can see here on the left side, um, it's a venture capital. Um, and on the right side, there is a workforce. Basically, I would say all major uh, cities of United States, especially like these big hubs in San Francisco and, and New York, well, LA somewhere here, and even San Diego right there. But at the same time, um, some companies offer remote jobs as well. So I would say if you are professional and you have internet, you, you can work from like a desert somewhere. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, okay. This is the demand uh, graph. So as you can see here, only one, they only hire one person out of six positions. So demand is actually very high, like super hot market. That's our market, yay. <laughs> so, and there was a spike in um, like 2016 actually, it used to be like three to one, now it's six to one. Um, things are getting crazy, good for us. Um, so this is the demand um, in terms of the, the, the jobs for 2018. So as you can see here, well, of course, after like fitness trainer and stuff like that, software engineer, basically number four in the list. So it's still very high uh, demandable job. And well, yeah, you can compare the numbers. <laughs> they say a lot, right? And uh, education level, well, while 89% of software developers have associate level at least, um, actually 40% of postings by companies, there is no mention of education requirements. Basically, they just don't have any choice. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, what about quality assurance now? Well, it's <laughs> a wrong image. Right? We all know that. <laughs> so, so actually, when it comes to QA engineer demand, 
as you could see here on top of the list, architect, security engineer, data scientist, those are very technical people right there, but look what's going on. QA engineer number four, actually before front end engineer, mobile, mobile developer, Java network, you name it. Actually QA engineer is somehow one of the, the highest uh, demandable jobs on the market. I don't know, ask Forbes. Um, and when it comes to education, that's um, actually a very interesting thing because um, there is a correlation for education usually, right? So for software developers, there is a Bachelor of Computer Science and the same for product manager. They have their own and project managers, they have certification and stuff, but who teaches QA really? Um, yeah, some people from with a computer science degree actually get to QA field, but I feel like most of the people really are uh, for them, it's like a secondary job and secondary education. So there is no, well, there is a formal ISTQB certification. I don't know if you heard about that. Who heard about that, guys? You heard? Yeah, well, it's in Belgium, so way far. <laughs> Who has it? <laughs> okay. Uh, there is actually an American one, ASTQB. We got ASTQB. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, well, this is... Interesting, right? That's a compensation comparison. So as you can see here, the starting point, the entry point around 50K for QA and around 60K uh, for developers. But when it grows, it's actually, I would say like 10, 15% in reality, but um, the gap between the uh, technology uh, knowledge usually way, I mean, way different comparing QAs versus uh, versus developers, right? Even like for junior developer, if you want to get like 60K job, you will, you will have to answer all those tricky questions about like frameworks and like programming and algorithms, right? Well, for QA, like how would you test a chair? <laughs> right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so let's start um, um, reviewing the market. So for QA, so here, um, this is LA market. Basically, I just pulled this information like uh, two hours ago, <laughs> last night. So as you can see in LA, actually 3,600 jobs are, are posted right now um, in Indeed. And uh, in the Bay Area, I don't know how that even possible, but it's actually less than in, in LA, probably a bug or something, but I mean, it's pretty hot market here in Los Angeles. Well, for developers, it's 21,000. So yeah, there is some difference, right? Well, of course, yeah, it's very hard to really compare like what are the, all the keywords for like QA quality assurance, QA analyst, like QA engineer, and the same for development. So yeah, it's, it's a tough comparison, but just rough numbers. Uh, so LinkedIn, around about the same numbers, 2,800. Somehow in Bay Area, almost 6,000, which is makes sense to me. Um, but for developers, only 6,500. Well, anyways, <laughs> there's a lot, plenty of jobs here in Los Angeles and Bay Market as well. Um, I feel like requirements though for in the Bay Market are much higher actually when it comes to technical stuff. So. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's talk about money a little bit. Um, so this is the entry level for, um, um, let's call it QA tester, right? I, I personally don't like that uh, wording, but well, according to um, Glassdoor, the, um, the junior level makes around $50,000. Does it sound right? in the gaming industry, <laughs> internship, okay. <laughs> so anyways, when you grow and well, these are the requirements uh, for that role, basically just like manual testing, web, mobile apps, bug reports, test documentation, uh, maybe, well, if you know like how to intercept sneak to traffic and you just like a very good um, and some information about like builds and environments, cross-platform testing. I mean, this is a real uh, 
real position in some, some company. Um, QA analyst, um, kind of next step maybe, maybe not, but to me it sounds more like working with requirements, with the product, working closely with like uh, product management on like how uh, application should behave. Uh, but again, it's very different in different companies. They can name it like as they want. So there's, I wouldn't really trust it. And then QA engineer, it's more technical position. Um, yeah, around 80,000 uh, a year. And requirements sometimes include, well, they should, most, most, of, most of the times they include SQL and Linux knowledge, at least like basic navigation, SSH and stuff like that. JMeter, nice to have API, some knowledge of coding because these tools like, even JMeter has its own uh, console where, where you can write some code. Uh, but even though it's kind of not the way you usually do, you usually still use uh, UI, which makes life easier. Um, automation engineer, the next step, $94,000 on average, uh, not bad, getting to six figures <laughs> slowly, right? Well, uh, the bad part, you have to know Selenium Web Driver, which is very hot, right? And of course, programming language now is must, um, and they will ask you some OOP basics or design patterns, um, collection stuff like sorting, bubble sorting, and um, all that stuff that we usually don't use in production code, but well, so for some reason they still ask those questions, right? Of course, uh, version control, and at this level you're supposed to guide, provide some guidance for, for the QA team and train them or even hire them. Um, and the next step is uh, software developer in test. Uh, well, almost six figures, <laughs> right? Well, for this guy, you probably should be something like go like this. I coding all day long, know everything. You are a software developer now. <laughs> um, this is the interesting that I found. Um, interesting piece that I found. Um, I'm looking on some positions once in a while, not actively, I'm not actively looking for to change a job, but um, once in a while. So one day I found position, which is my position in my company. I was like, huh, that's interesting. So let's say what they pay over there. You probably don't see it. Yeah. They say 160 to 200 K, which is, I can say, yeah, about right. Um, and I was actually looking for some other positions posted. I saw the, the, the biggest I saw was Microsoft in uh, Playa Vista, I believe, right? 220K, they promised. I don't know. I never applied. So. <laughs> but, well, you can see it's from like 160 to 200K. It's, it doesn't mean it's like a salary. Usually they offer uh, like the base salary and then some bonuses and then some stock, stock options like in my company for example so it's called total compensation really so it's not like the money that you see in your pocket but in a year <laughs> in two years <laughs> right i mean with this uh, money basically it puts you right here in like five percent of earners or even in one percent of earners in the united states and if you're single, this is, this is where you're at. And if you're married, you probably like pretty much like very far <laughs> from the poverty line, which is crazy, right? So not bad. Yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about career path in software QA. Um, I don't know if you could see it clearly, but basically um, at the bottom here, this is like junior QA <laughs> analyst. As, and as you can see here, it's actually one of the, like, the easiest points to get into the field. But then you can grow technical skills and just become like lead QA or manager or director. At the same time, you can actually switch to like release management, Basically, I would say anywhere. So there is, uh, I know people who's uh, doing 
who switched from QA to uh, business, like product owners. I know people who became developer. Uh, in my company, a lot of people moving to DevOps, which is kind of fancy thing these days. Uh, but basically, it's kind of up to you. You get you get there and you decide, which is I think is very cool. Um, any questions? <laughs>